All right. I just wanted to show you the vector search that I implemented in ChatGPT uh, code interpreter. So how this works is it allows you to upload a file that can be a large text file. And then it allows you to search that large text file using semantic search, meaning that it searches based on the meaning rather than um, by keyword or something like that. So it'll give you a semantic similarity kind of search. This isn't perfect um, because this is using some pretty simple vectors because it doesn't have access to a really powerful model, um, but it's pretty good. So um, just a couple of notes. This is written in Pseudoling, which, is, which allows you to um, kind of um, break things down into components that you can then reuse and, and compose very easily. So it allows us to break out different functions. And these functions aren't defined with actual code. They're defined with um, English pseudo language, right? So, so if you already know English, it's pretty easy to learn how to code with pseudolang. But as you can see, um, this allows function composition with things like this concat, and then it composes with sort by and composes that with take five. And I see a little typo here, but <laughs> it's going to be able to figure that out anyway. Uh, you can see another composition here. It extrapolates the query, and then for each um, for each variant of the query, it runs a search, and then it um, composes the search results with some surrounding text. And that surrounding text is actually a function that's that's defined up here. So if the match is longer than a few sentences, it forgets about the surrounding text and just returns the match. But otherwise, it's going to pick up some surrounding context to give you a little bit more information about where the match was found. Um, and that can be really useful because this can decide to chunk these into small pieces that can be like a section of a sentence instead of a whole sentence or a whole paragraph. So pulling that context back in, it gives you a little bit more uh, of the surrounding context and lets you kind of know where this came from. Um, and also gives you more information about your search results. So that's pretty nice. Um, and then the query itself, uh, it's going to refresh the memory. So that one of the cool things that I found about the code interpreter is that it is an agent. It's not just a like prompt and response, kind of ask it a question and it'll give you an answer. It is an agent, which means it will work on the question um, and, and self-reflect and figure out errors and, and fix its own errors and, and things like that and keep on trying just like human would until it meets the objective or it eventually will time out and give up. Um, so the query is telling it uh, to refresh its memory because only a certain amount of text will fit into the context of the language model. And once it's seen more text than that, it will start to forget things like how to perform the functions. So what we do at the end of this is we tell it to save the entire prompt as a text file, a prompt.sudo. And then when it goes to query, it will refresh its memory on how it's supposed to query because it's kind of a complicated process. And then after that's done, it extrapolates additional keywords from your initial query to try to get more uh, related matches. And then it'll run the search and then pull in the surrounding context from the search results. And then it'll pass that stuff back to you um, and summarize the results. Um, so that's kind of what it's supposed to do. Let's see how it did, right? So. Uh, the first thing that I noticed when I ran this is that it forgot to save the prompt. So the very first thing that I did was I told it, um, <laughs> well, you have access to a Python interpreter. Sometimes it'll tell you um, things like, it's it's uh, as an AI language model, I can certainly help design such a system, but I can't actually execute this scripts in a live environment. Well, that's not actually true. It's hallucinating that. So we're just reminding it, Yes, you can. You have access to a Python code interpreter. And uh, before we get, begin, please save the prompt. And then as, when I reminded it to save the prompt, it did that, 
right? So um, it'll actually produce, it, it dumps the prompt into uh, some text in Python, and then it saves it um, as a file into our mount data prompts.sudo. So this mount data, you can see, you actually get a file system inside of a container that you can interact with and work with. So that's pretty cool. You can save and load files and you can upload files and, and um, you can use that as memory to help it stay fresh with what it's supposed to be doing. So a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just interact with it conversationally. Um, but I find that if I try to do that in, in my conversations, I will forget things that it needs to get things right. So I like to make a prompt with a bunch of functions that are well-defined and tested and stuff like that. Instead of trying to remember all the things that I have to tell it to, to get it to do the job right, I make a script and then tell it to save the script and remind itself of the definition of that script whenever it tries to run any of the complex functions from the script. So once we've done that, I tell it to vectorize and I uploaded the entire script of Monty Python, which is long. <laughs> it's not a short film. It's, it's a whole movie. Uh, so it's an entire movie script. And then it goes and tries to do that. It tells you what it plans to do. Um, and then it tries to work it out. And as you can see, it writes the Python code required to do this because it, get, it has a Python interpreter. And as you can see, it didn't get it right the first time. It tried to use a library that requires network access to download things. And that didn't work for it. So it adjusted its approach and it said, okay, so we're going to remove the stop word lookup thing and we're going to try to use a simple sentence tokenizer instead. So it tried to do that and that also resulted in an error because um, it tried to chunk the document that wasn't loaded. So it had to load the document first. <laughs> so it goes and it loads the, um, loads the document that, that I uploaded Right, And then um, after that, it chunked it and vectorized it, and that worked. So then we tell it to run the query command. And remember, we told it to save the, um, the whole script and then refresh its memory before it tries to do things. And it did that. So here you can see it refreshing its memory for the definition of what the query function should be. And... Um, so here it's it's just loading that and showing it to itself. So it's loading it into its memory context so that it knows what to do. Uh, so it does that, and then it goes through to implement the the um, search query. So it's supposed to extrapolate the query into different vector representations, run the search, and then it's saying, "Well, I can't actually do that. That might be tricky because I don't have enough guidance." And uh, so I kind of stopped it before it was done here, and I told it. Uh, let's update the prompt.sudo. So at any time, you can just dynamically update the prompt that it that it has. And we told it to update the file. So we gave it the file name. We said update the, the file. And it does that. And it goes and resaves a new version of the file uh, by replacing part of the file. So it takes the new prompt. And then it just replaces a bit of the file. And then it opens it and saves it. So now we have the entire new prompt saved and then um, so it tries to rerun the query and it worked this time so we searched for bunny and there is no word bunny in the entire script of Monty Python there is a bunny but they call it a rabbit in the script All right so you can see these are semantically related but not exact keyword matches so it pulls up the related stuff from the script, some or what it thinks are the most related things from the script. This isn't very related, but it's talking about an animal, right? And a bunny is an animal too, so it thinks that that's related. But here we have a better match here and also a better match here. I th think, well, sort of, hamster is kind of like a bunny, right? <laughs> So anyway, you can see it kind of working. Um, I just wanted to show you that little demo and show some of the capabilities of um, Code Interpreter that you may not be aware of, like your ability to create entire scripts in, in a pseudo language like Pseudolang and have saved functions and then 
use the memory, um, use the file system as a, as a large memory for, um, for your programs. Uh, anyway, um, enjoy. Talk to you later.